Amen. I am so fired up for today. I'm very excited to be here and to share part two of Money Matters. Come on, who's excited to be here? Anybody? Let's go, let's go, let's go. So before I, I lose track of all the fun I'm about to have, very, very excited for this, but I want to introduce myself because I know there's a couple new people in here I haven't had a chance to meet yet. My name is Elliot. My wife Tiffany and I have the great privilege of pastoring this group of people called Lifeline Church. Give it up for yourselves. You are an amazing bunch of people, and I love you so much. I'm so proud of you. I love you. We have a mission here at the church. You can say it with me if you know it. It's to be a lifeline by leading people and becoming lifelong followers of Jesus. Amen, somebody. Now, uh, before we jump into today's message, I want to let you know we've got the notes for you in the, in the bulletin shells that were handed to you on your way in. Um, you can take some notes with us uh, that way so you can remember what the message is about and, you know, use it as a bookmark in your Bible, whatever you want to do there. Or you can download the YouVersion Bible app so that you can follow along digitally, which is what I like to do, or use this thing right here, which is the bane of my existence right now. Let me talk to you about this. This is the 90-day tithe challenge. It's in the seat back in front of you. And I have been telling people, hey, try this out. Use this as an opportunity to grow in your faith. And I've got a couple testimonies already. I'm, I'm really, really excited. Five people have signed up since last week. Five people have signed up for the, the tithe challenge. And already, it's been less than seven days. It's, I got 90, all right? God's got 90 to show up. But less than seven days later, um, one of the individuals who scanned the QR code and signed up and, and plugged in their information and said, you know what, for 90 days, I'm going to try this thing. I'm going I'm to try, you know, people have wanted to step out in faith and, and do, what's, do what God says is faithful with our finances, but sometimes it's just hard, and I understand that. That's why we've created this. And within seven days, um, this individual said that they got uh, uh, an interview for their job to become permanent, and if they get that, Guess what the percentage increase would be in their pay? 10%. Can you believe it? It's almost like, it's almost like God is saying, hey, I just want to, it's, it's not there yet, so y'all could be praying for that person, or whoever that is. It's anonymous to you. I'm not going to make anybody, you know, put anybody out there before it's time. But it's just funny to me that God really does, he really does this. That's why we allow people to test God in this area because God said himself, you can test me in this area. He's faithful. He's so faithful. And he'll do things like that. Like I said earlier uh, in the week, uh, the, when we started this challenge, is the, the, the way that God comes through might be financial. It might be some kind of financial blessing to you. It, it could be a relationship thing. It could be a health thing. It could be any number of, of ways that God shows himself faithful to you. We've seen all of that. And so all we ask in return, if you decide to take this 90-day challenge, is... Once the emails start coming and the videos are coming to you and you get the encouragement, when God shows up, let us know. Let us know so that we can encourage people and let people know how good God is. When we put him to the test in this area, he is faithful. He is faithful to come through in the area of finances. And the rest of the series is really about, honestly, it's about like above and beyond stuff. <laughs> We're going to talk about generosity where the, the, the tithe thing is like, hey, Y'all ought to just do this. That's what God said about it. Y'all just do this. Bring it in to the storehouse so that there's food in the house. And then after that, let's talk about being generous. And that's what this series is really about, being generous, having like a heart of generosity. Last week, we talked a little bit about the culture of greed that we live in. I didn't call anybody greedy per se, but we, we saw, and, and you should check this out on, on YouTube if you missed it, that we really do live in this culture of of greed, and, and we found out that we could combat that with, um, what did we say? We said, want less, give more. And that's the way to keep our hearts right before God is just to continually remind ourselves, I, I don't need everything in sight. I don't need to buy every size and every color just because there's free returns, okay? I don't need to do that. I don't need to do it. And then I'm also, there, there's some like elbows flying. I saw them from this, I saw it. Don't do that. Don't do that. It's a great way to get yourself in trouble. Um, but we, we just began this conversation last week that, you know, money matters. It matters to people and it matters to God. Uh, I shared with you last week, but I'm going to share this probably every week because it's just so important and it solidifies the reason why we need to do this. 
the, the number one cause for, for fights in marriage is finances. And one of the highest percentages of, of reasons that divorces happen is, is rooted in those financial fights. And if, if I needed any more reason, which I don't, the, the vast majority of prayer requests that come into the church are financial. All right, it's about half. And then the rest are scattered with this, that, the other thing. But many, most, most of the, the one topic is, is financial related. So it matters to us. Finances matter to us and how we treat finances. It matters to God too. And so we want to understand what should we be doing with our finances. Let me just start by saying this. Um, giving is not easy. Okay, let's just, let's just be honest with each other. Let's start from a place of honesty. Giving is not easy. It's not easy, but, but getting, that's easy. <laughs> it, it comes natural to us, the, the getting part. Uh, Christmas, when you're a kid, you wake up, man, the first thing on your mind, when you're a five-year-old kid, you wake up and go, oh, I can't wait for mom to open the present I got her. No, I don't think so. When you're that age, you pretty much have a one-track mind, and, 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 and getting is real easy. I'll, I'll be honest with you. Uh, lately, I've been blessed quite a bit. Um, I've had, in the last two years, a number of churches, like more than one, more than two, um, reach out to me and say, hey, you know, Elliot, we're friends or whatever. We want you to come to our conference. We want you to come to our church, visit around, hang out with us. You know, I'm a friendly guy. So I make a lot of friends from here, there, and the other place. And I've had multiple churches reach out to me and say, hey, don't worry about it. We'll pay for everything. Just come on out and visit us and we'll pay for your, we'll pay for your stuff. We'll, we'll pay for your food and you can stay over here. Let me just tell you something. It feels good. It feels real nice to get blessed like that. Has anyone ever been blessed like that? Like, maybe not like that, but something. Someone did something for you. Someone was kind to you. Someone was generous to you. They, they gave you a little something, and it's like, ooh, yeah, that's nice. I think I could get used to that. You know, it's, it, it happens, and it's been happening to me. And I'll, let me just tell you, getting comes natural, but giving, so very recently, the most recent thing that's happened is uh, we had a, a friend visit us from out of town. And we covered his hotel. We gave him a nice gift. We wanted to bless him. And so in like the same few months, I had a lot given to me, you know, and then I had a lot that went out from me. How do you think the two of those things felt in relation to each other? <laughs> One was, ooh, yeah, this is nice. The other was, oh, can I handle this? I'm not sure. Like, this is, who. Not sure what this is, what's, what's going on here, but I've got this certain feeling where it's like, ugh, my pocket's getting pulled like this. Let me just paint the picture for you. Let's, let's do an imaginary, this is not real, all right? It's an illustration, but let's just imagine right now, if I said, um, there's gonna be one of two things that happens right here, right now. You are either, right now, gonna just stay, stay sitting right there, and if you stay seating right there, you're just gonna stay, don't move, and, and someone's gonna stand up and come and hand you $1,000. Sounds good, right? Okay, there's option, that's option one. Here's option two. Option two is, when I say go, you stand up and you go give someone $1,000. One, two, three. Everybody's ready to receive you all seating. Well, I, was, I told you already, it's pretend. But let me just tell you, I, I, and you can probably guess, the split would not be 50-50. <laughs> it would be most of us that said, you know what, I could use a thousand dollars. I've got this and that and this and that. But giving a thousand, ooh, yikes, that's painful. That would hurt. The reason why I'm kind of painting all these pictures right now is because Jesus said something that we're gonna that we're gonna break apart for the rest of our time together. He said something kind of radical. It is more blessed to give than receive. <laughs> um Sure it is. <laughs> if you say so, Jesus. I mean, I have been on the receiving end of, of a blessing, and I've been on the side of giving, and I know I'm supposed to say amen right there, but I don't know. If, if I'm not a pastor and I hadn't seen all the miracles and I'm sitting where you're sitting, I've got questions about this statement. It's more blessed to give than receive. Really, have you ever really gotten something good? It's a blessing, man. Have you ever given some, someone something like, it's hard, I have, and it's, it's kind of tough. 
It's kind of tough. So there is real life questions about generosity and giving that because Jesus says this statement that we're going to break apart. Money matters. Generosity matters. So what do we do with this? What do we do with this statement? Now, he, now to be fair, he didn't say you're not blessed at all to receive. He said it's more of a blessing to give than it is to receive. That doesn't mean it's not a blessing to, to receive. So I'm going to give you four reasons from the Bible, and hopefully they're going to just like impact your life in such a way where you can begin to see if I can, if I can shape my, my life around these things, if I can learn to be generous in such a way like, like the Bible's teaching me to in this way. Man, like forget, forget about like the, the tithing and, and all that baseline stuff. Like if I can learn to be generous like this, it could change our lives. It could change everything. And number one is this. You got to track with me on here. Because number one is this. Is we make a difference. It's more blessed to give than receive because we make a difference. And you're like, well, I, I care about making a difference, but not like so, so much that I'm going to give away my life savings and not receive a life savings. Well, hang on there. Hang on. Just wait. Just wait. You will never know true joy and refreshment until you make a difference in someone else's life. Paint the picture now. Christmas. Let's go back to Christmas. I cannot wait for Christmas. It's coming, and I love you, Christmas. I'm coming for you. I'm excited for it. There is something that happens um, when you get older. Uh, so when you're a kid and you're excited to receive that, but when you get older, it's, it's the giving of the gift that gives us the, the true satisfaction. Most of us. Most of us. Because selfishness is inherited. You don't have to work to, to produce that in your life. You know, just... Throw a toy in between two babies. See what happens. All right? They will, they will show you what comes natural to them. And it's not generosity. It's, oh, I want this. But if we are trained and taught and encouraged to be generous, which is where, you know, this is where it should be happening in our homes and in the church. Trained, taught, encouraged to be generous. Then when we, when we go and, and get like a really thoughtful gift, a really thoughtful gift, like when you know what your kid wants, or because you're paying attention to what they're saying, and you get, and they don't, they don't know what's coming. And then they open it up, and you're, they're like, what? Mom, how did you know? And they're just so excited. Mm, you're with the coffee, just like, mm, yeah, that's all right. You nailed it. There's, it, it, hit, it scratches a different itch, you know? It just, it hits a little different to give that way. But let me, let me take this to, to, another, to another space here. I want to ask a question. How does God bless people who are really in need? How does God bless people who are really in need? See, I've, I, I've learned some things. I've read the Bible quite a bit, and I know that there's an angel uh, named Michael. And he comes when there's spiritual warfare happening and I've got prayers, you know, and I, I read in the book of Daniel that Michael comes and he's like, oh yeah, I was slashing the devil and I was doing uh, spiritual warfare. And I know Michael comes in response to prayer and does spiritual warfare. I've heard of him. I've heard of him. And then there's Gabriel. If you've ever read the book of Luke and Gabriel comes and tells Mary, oh, you're going to have some, he delivers the word. Man, I need a word from the Lord. Gabriel is like in charge of all of that and delivering God's ordinance and his word. I've heard of Michael. I've heard of Gabriel. What's the name of that angel that comes with the bags of money? What's his name? Like he comes and then he just like sets him down there. I know I've read that someplace. I'm not sure where, but there's an angel whose name is like, was it Lucifer? That's not him. That's not him. I'm not kidding. I'm just kidding. Maybe he's like, over here. I got this bag of money for you. Not in my notes. Should have stayed away from that one. No, 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 no. There is no angel that delivers bags of money because why? Because God intended it to be you and it to be me who provides for people's needs. There isn't no angel that's going to come swooping out of heaven and go, here, here's everything. Even when people needed provision, God always used something physical to deliver it. Always, always. Hey, go, go cast your nets on the other side of the boat. Said Jesus to Peter. All right, he used, God used a, a, physical, a physical way to, to meet a physical need. It's not just going to appear. Oh, cash. Oh, I started tithing and now I got a big pile of cash. It doesn't work like that. No, there's someone's going to do something and someone's going to deliver something in such a way you and me are the delivery system to bring God's blessing to people. I have an illustration for you. Some of you are wondering what this plant is all about. You and me, 
are this. This is a conduit, a delivery system for God's blessing. How many of you want to guess if this water is turned on or not? You know it is. You know me. I brought a chainsaw up in church. This is not as bad as that. Okay, so this right here, there's water in here. There's God's blessing in here. And it is right now pent up right here at this spot. When we learn generosity, when we learn to open ourselves and, and, and live with open hands so that God's blessing can flow through and out to other people. There is a hurting world out here. There's like this poor plant is dying. Its leaves are falling down. There's a hurting world out there that needs our blessing, that needs us to just, oh, just a little bit because I'm scared of it. <laughs> this is you and me. We are the conduit. How does God bless a hurting world financially when, when people have prayers and they're asking, God, please help me. I, I need some. somebody, you and me, need to open ourselves up to receive something. And here, here's something I want to show you too. The amount of water flowing through here stops if we stay closed. It stops. Like this is a set amount. It's right here. But if I were to open this thing full blast, I'm not going to do it. Elliot, don't do it. Don't do it. I have to convince myself, talk myself, and don't do this. The amount of water continues to increase. It's like the, the reservoir begins to flow through. It begins to flow through. I've told you about the, uh, the Red Sea and the, the Dead Sea before, how there's uh, got a bunch of inlets and no outlets. That's why it's dead. Okay, it's got everything flowing in, nothing flowing out. There's nothing that can live there because it's got no outlets. That's how many of us, like we, we work and we work and we save and we save, but we struggle to open ourselves up. But you and I are the delivery system to deliver God's blessing and the amount that's here doesn't get less, it gets more. When we open ourselves up, there's actually more that begins to flow through, not to keep, but to bless, but to go outward with it, to learn to bless someone else. I'm gonna put this down before I get myself in trouble. Absolutely, yes. It never runs out. Some of us are worried. If I open myself up and give and, and all this generosity, whatever, whatnot, I'm going to run out. I'm going to run out of blessing. Come on, guys. It's not going to run. I could leave that thing on overnight for a week, for a month, for a year. It's not going to run out. If there is a limit to what God could do, you and I are never going to see it. Let's just put it that way. Never going to see it. 2 Corinthians 9.11 says this. Yes, you will be enriched in every way so that you can... Always be generous. Why? Why? So you can have a full account. You're going to be enriched in every way. So you can have a full account. So you can always feel safe. So you can never take risks. No, we're enriched to be generous. That's the whole point. And then the scripture goes on to say, and when you take your gifts to those who need them, they will thank you. They'll thank God. They'll thank God. Your generosity has an eternal impact that you may never see on this side of heaven, but you might just get to heaven and see how your generosity changed someone's life, how your generosity actually got someone there, actually answered a secret prayer, buying a coffee, paying a bill, donating a car, like whatever, whatever, wherever you're at. There's a lot of different people in a lot of different places of life. I'm not assuming any of that. It could be something simple. It could be something extravagant. The Holy Spirit speaks to all of us differently and gives us all opportunities to bless others. But if we would learn to open ourselves up and when the Holy Spirit prompts us to be generous, if we would just do it, you never know what kind of secret prayer that person was praying the night before. God, I just, would you please show me a sign? I've heard this many times. God, would you please show me a sign? And then someone hands them a card. Someone buys the coffee. Someone does the little thing. And they're just, their mind is blown. Because they know, the person, on, the person giving didn't know. The person giving was just going, oh, can I spare five bucks today? Can I spare the 20 bucks today? But the person on the receiving end will never forget that for the rest of their life. You have no idea how such a small act can make such a huge difference. That's why it's more blessed to give then receive because you might just get to heaven and see someone that's there because of a small gesture from you. Amen, everybody? Let's go to number two. Number two is this. God rewards us. It's more blessed to give than receive because God rewards us. Uh-oh, watch out. Uh -uh, prosperity alert. <laughs> prosperity gospel alert. Well, hang on. Hang on a second. Track with me. Sorry, not sorry. 
God is very, very good about returning that which we, when we are generous, God meets us there. He absolutely does. Proverbs 19, 17, I was struck by this this week. I must have read the book of Proverbs like, I don't know, 194 times in my life. It's just, I read it on repeat, Proverbs, because I know I need more wisdom. And so I must have read this next passage, uh, I don't know how many times, I have no clue. But this scripture hit me a little different as I was preparing for this series. And it goes like this. If you help the poor, you are lending to the Lord and he will repay you. I'm like, I don't know. That's, that's big. That's kind of big right there because I've lent money before. Raise your hand if you've ever lent anybody money. Show of hands. You ever lent anybody money? Everybody in the house, what do you know about that? It, getting that money back is not quite a sure thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's not a quite a sure thing. And some of you are going, I know. I'm waiting on it right now. <laughs> I know. I know. Because that's how it feels. When we lend to someone, to a person, to a human being, it feels like, I don't know if I'm going to get this back. This may never come back to me at all. I got a little quick story about this. Um, I, I was going golfing. I was going golfing with a friend, a, a close friend a close friend, someone I'm still close with. But I was going golfing with that, and I show up, you know, and I got my matching little outfit. You know, I got the blue and the blue with the blue shoes. You know how golfers do, man. We got to match all the way, all right? So I was coming in feeling good, got my little golf cleats on, my little bucket hat. I was just ready to go, so ready. I show up, and I, and I pay the money, you know, and golf ain't free. <laughs> Golf ain't free, all right? This is an expensive hobby. It's even just a walk on their grass costs $20. This is incredible to me. If you want to ride in a cart, it's even more, like $40. And so I, I show, and my friend's there, and he's like, oh, you guys got Apple Pay? You guys got Apple Pay? He's like using his, using his watch, and they got like a, a crankshaft, like cash machine. It's like super old. Of course they don't have Apple Pay. He shows up, he's like, where's your Apple Pay at? He's like, oh, bro. And then he, goes, he does this number. You know, you've seen this one before? You know what's coming next? Oh, bro, can you, uh, can you like spot me? Can you spot me 40 bucks? 40 bucks? Man, I already paid my own way and I'm going to pay you. And this is what happened. I, I, I paid for that round of golf. That was about three years ago. <laughs> All kinds of things. So I resolved long ago that if, it's, if, if not getting this money back is going to compromise us, I'm just going to say no. It's better for me to say no. And if I'm going to lend this money, I'm ready. Thank you. Yes, that's what I'm talking about right there. I'm not, I, I don't expect to see it back. If anybody asked me for money today, the answer is no in advance. <laughs> I don't lend money the same day I tell this story. I don't. I don't. But you could take that. You could do with that as you want. Um, because when I lend money like that, I never ask about it again. I know I'm lending money to the Lord. I'm lending money to the Lord. And he is not a man that he should lie. Lending money to God, he, he got you back, man. And he can pay you back in a lot of different ways other than money, too. He can get you back. He said he would. And here's the, here's the beautiful thing. We don't, we're not even doing something for him. We could do something for someone else. And God gives us credit like we did it for him. Don't believe me? Oh, well, how about this one, Matthew 25? You ever read this one? For I was hungry, you fed me. I was thirsty, you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me into your home. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I, I don't even want a picture, like, how that went down. Like, here, naked person, have some clothes. Like, what, what was happening in this story? I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Uh, pause. I, I, this is showing every single way you can be generous to someone. Every single way. It's not just money, but it's every single way. Then the righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you and, and do all those other things too? And the king will say, I tell you the truth. When you did it to the least one of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it for me. 
God gives to us, and he's so generous to us, everything we have. It's so beautiful. He gives to us, and, and if we help others with what he's already given us, he rewards us as if we did it for him and to him. That's why it's more blessed to give than receive, because God says, I got you. I will cover that. I will bless you. I will repay, says the Lord. And that quote comes about revenge, but he's good at paying back <laughs> about all kinds of things. Amen. Number three is this. Number three reason. Uh, we are blessed more to give more. We are blessed more to give more. I want to take advantage of this opportunity to, to, to teach through a very misunderstood uh, passage of Scripture out of Luke 6, 38. Luke 6, 38. It says this. Give and you will receive. But then there's this whole other part that follows it. Your gift will return to you in full. And then most translations say good measure. I like that. Good measure. Not my favorite translation. It doesn't say it. Go figure. But it's all right. Good measure or in full. Pressed down. Shaken together to make room for more. Hold up. Running over. Running over and poured into your lap the amount you give will determine the amount you get back. This is right around the time I ask everybody watching online to put their hand on the TV screen and you're going to get a blessing. No, 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 no. This is just a really famous scripture for asking for offerings. It just is. It just is. I mean, but it's scripture. It's scripture after all. So we deserve to understand what it's talking about. Given you will receive, your gift will return back to you good measure. Because what we need to understand is that this was spoken and talked about in the time of the open market. You and me, we go to Food for Less, and if I buy a five-pound bag of sugar, that thing's five pounds. I put it right on the scale, five pounds. If it's not, I send it back. I get the money back. I get it back right away, and it's, if it's one gram off, and it's free returns all the time, flour, sugar, coffee, whatever, the amount of like milliliters is on the drink, and it's to the T. That is not the situation that these people lived in. These people went to the market, like the open market where you like had your sack or like a little something to carry flour in and you went, hey, I'm, I'm going to buy, you know, this many coins worth of flour and then they just start pouring it in. And then they used either like a, a scale or some, a lot of times they would eyeball it, you know, about this much, about this much in there. All right. And then that's when Jesus spoke about using dishonest scales. You know, it is like, because that happened all the time. If you're a merchant in the market and you skimp somebody just a little tiny bit all day, you know, that's, a, that's like this much that you, that you saved or stole, whatever you want to look at it, you know. And Jesus did not, just a little side note for those of us that are in business for ourselves or you're in charge of like, pay attention to little things. Be generous with the little things. Be fair. Good measure. Don't, don't round up for your favor. God says, give it, back. give it back in a good way. Now, let me break this scripture down. Good measure. It will return to you in full or good measure. Good measure means the measure. You know, like you're at the open market, they pour it. The measure is good. It's fair. It will be given back to you in good measure. Fair. It's fair. Like, I got my gift back. It's equal. The amount is there. It, it's, it's, it's perfectly fine. It's good measure. But then he said, press down. Who's ever made themselves a pot of coffee? As you can see, I'm quite the coffee drinker myself, and uh, I, I don't make my own coffee. Tiffany makes it for me. She is so wonderful. You are the best. And the, the, the grounds in there, you got the little coffee filter right there. And then just picture with me, and you pour the grounds in there, and it kind of makes a little mountain. And then you take it and go, shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. And then you go, mm, I want some more coffee in there. Well, you're at the open market, and you got your sack right there, and they're pouring it on, and you're like, <laughs> shaking it up a little bit. You're like, mm, you know, oh, right there. Mm, very good. Press down, shaking together. Now that is like, if you had a good relationship, if you had a good relationship with your merchant, your vendor, they would do that for you. They would, they would put it on there. They would press it down, shake it together. It's all, it's all set right there. But then Jesus goes on, and this is where it gets interesting. He says, running over, spilling into your lap. You will, not, you will not go to any vendor that stays in business that's going to that's gonna treat you like that because they can't. You, you pay the money and then it like runs over. It's pouring in your lap. You're like pressing it down. You're shaking it together. But now it's running over. They're going to run out. And this is what Jesus says he's going to do for us when we're generous. 
give, and you'll receive that gift back. Not just good measure, not just return to you in full, not just pressed down and shaken together, running over. To the extent that you give, it will be given back to you. It is more blessed to give than receive. This is not some get rich, like, oh, I'm going to get more if I give more. No, 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 no. We are blessed to be a blessing. This all came about because we gave to begin with. And it's, it's, it's like this cycle over and over again. We don't, we don't give to get. We get to give. Okay, it's get to give is the opportunity. Oh, I get to. It's my opportunity. It's my pleasure, as they say at the Holy Chicken Place. It's my pleasure. Chick-fil-A, that's always my, it's my pleasure to give. We get to give. But we also get, like I receive to give. I get to give. That's our language. That's what we need to understand is we need to be stuck in this like perpetual cycle of, of when we receive, we give. And that, that leads us to this last point right here, number four. It protects us. We're more blessed to give than receive because it protects our hearts. It guards our hearts. It guards our hearts. Because see, let's listen to this, everybody. The, the more God blesses you, and he will bless you. Like these testimonies that we're getting from people who are taking the tithe challenge, I am not, I'm not super surprised by it because I've seen it for years. I've seen it happen over and over again. I just heard a story this morning about somebody who did the, the, the tithe challenge before we had a fancy website for it and fancy videos and people just did it on their own and it was like we never found out. And someone told me this morning, someone I know very, very well was like, oh yeah, I started doing that and I got this brand new job and I got paid all this more money and, and started uh, getting Sundays off. I'm like, why didn't you tell me that? He's like, I did tell you. You have to tell me 10 times before I remember something. Come on, brother, help me. Help me out. Help me help you. <laughs> like, I'm not surprised by it because I've seen it so many times. I want to I wanna hear more stories because I know, I know he'll do it. But the more God blesses us, the more we have to be careful to not let it be inward, to not let it just be, oh, this is mine. Because the, the, the more we accumulate, the more we have, the more God's blessing is flowing through our hose and, and blessing out and it's like, it's like going, going, going. We've got to protect our hearts. We've got to protect our hearts. The perpetual cycle we need to live in is keep on receiving so that I can keep on giving. I keep on receiving from God so I can keep on giving. Let's be honest, everything we have, everything we have is a free gift from God, everything. Matthew 10, 8 says this, freely you have received, so freely give. Freely you have received, so freely give. So what really protects our hearts from turning inward? is Matthew six twenty one, Where your treasure is or goes, <laughs> there your heart will be also, or there your heart will go also. Notice the order. If I put my treasure out there, then my heart's going to be focused outward. But if I keep all my treasure in my household, in my house, and to just to bless me, then we're going to turn inward and turn into that dead sea where, where my, my spiritual life is just stagnant. It feels like I, I keep on wanting to grasp for more. I keep on wanting more, and I keep on asking God for blessing, and he, he's blessing me, but it's just something feels dead. I just don't feel alive. I don't want any of us to be, and I don't want any of us to get that out of messages like these because it's really hard to hear some of these promises that God spoke and not hear, I'm going to be blessed if I do this, and so I'm going to do this. But that should never be our motivation to be blessed, but he will bless you. So in order to keep our hearts pure and right before God, as we increase, we, ha we need to increase our generosity as well. As, as our personal means increase, we need to increase our, our generosity. So some of you might have noticed, some of you may not have, but I quoted Jesus earlier out of Acts chapter 20. So how is that possible? Jesus already died, rose again, ascended. How did I do that? It was Paul I was quoting, but Paul was quoting Jesus. So I quoted a quote of a quote of a, of a quote, but let's back up for just a little bit because it's more blessed to give than receive. Paul was making a point and, and maybe you'll catch it. It's right here. Out of Acts 20, verse 34 and 35. You know that these hands of mine have worked to supply my own needs 
and even the needs of those who are with me. And I have been a constant example of how you can help those in need by working hard. You should remember the words of the Lord Jesus. It is more blessed to give than receive. Now, most people have, a, have this way of thinking. It's very rational, very logical. It makes perfect sense. I go to work to pay my bills and to take care of the things that I want and need for my family. That's what we go to work for. It, it makes perfect sense. You're not wrong. But Paul comes in and says, you've seen how hard I've worked with my hands so that I can be a blessing to others. That's radical. That's radical right there. And I'm telling you, our Christianity ought to be radical. Imagine this, you, you go to work, but then you, you pull a few overtime hours just to give it all away. <laughs> I'm preaching myself out of a church right now. <laughs> preaching myself out of work here. I'm saying some things that don't sit right with most people. I'm going to go to work and I'm going to work overtime and I'm going to do all that just to, because it's more blessed to give than receive. That's exactly what Paul said. See, Paul was a tent maker. He made tents. I mean, and then he went on to, to get paid you know, by the various churches that he ministered to, but he made tents. And what Paul was saying is, I wouldn't just make one tent for my needs. I would sit down, I'd make a whole nother tent so that I could bless people, so that I could take care of people. That's radical stuff. There's not many people, I don't want to say it like that. What I want to say is, what if we changed our mindset about our resources? What if we began to look at what we do for a living and, and how much money we're sitting on not as just something that protects me, something that is an encouragement to me, but what if we looked at our resources as an, as an opportunity to, to give? As an opportunity. This is radical. I know it is. I know it is. But it's something that we, in the most, one of the most prosperous countries in the whole world, we have got, we've got to think about this. Because we are blessed. We are so blessed, everyone. And I would just ask you to, to just consider taking a, a fresh look at your finances. And I, I know there's so many people hurting. I, I get the prayer requests. I know there's so many people that are like, man, I just, but I'm, I'm tapped out. I, need, I have bills I need to pay. I don't know how I'm going to pay. Listen, just lean into what the Holy Spirit asks you to do. And I believe he will speak to you. He'll, he'll show up in your heart. He'll begin to talk to you about a little, a little generosity here, a little generosity there. Do you really think he's going to let you down? No, he's not going to let you down. In fact, he'll, he'll probably bless you. No, I'm, I'm, willing to, I'm willing to take a stand on that. He will bless you. He will bless you if we can learn to be generous. But that blessing should not, never be our motivation. We don't give more to get more. We, we give more because we're blessed more. We give more to make a difference in this world. We give more because God has given us more than we deserve or could ever repay. He gave us forgiveness. He gave us salvation. He gave us our life itself. Freely you have received, so freely give. We give more to bring more glory to God. When the world sees that the most generous people in the entire world are the people of God, he gets the glory. He gets the glory. That's what I want to see. Lifeline Church, that's what I want to see. Us being generous towards not just each other, but towards the world. Towards people that need it. Just thinking on, on our mind, how can I bless? How can I give? How, how can I be over here? How can I? Thinking about where can my outlets be? How much more can I do? And if there's one last area that needs to be given, maybe it's just your life. <laughs> oh, simple thing like that? Maybe that. Maybe your heart. Maybe finances is the next step, but the first step is where your heart lives right now. Maybe some of us, it's time to just let go of, of trying to take care of our own life. Trying to take care of our own, not just our own needs, but our own life, our own happiness our own satisfaction, our own fulfillment. 
and we've been trying to do it our way. But what I'm asking you today is to open your hands up, open your heart up. Say, God, you can have me. You can have me. I'm ready to give myself to you. If that's you, I'm going to give you the opportunity right now to do just that. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes with me? Father, I ask for open hearts and open minds today. I just ask that during a message like this, a message about generosity and giving, whether the number one thing that we can give to you is simply ourselves, simply our hearts. Everything else flows from that. Lord, that we would truly give ourselves to you in this moment. If I've described you in any way, if you're the kind of person that maybe you used to walk close with the Lord and you drifted, things have happened, and you've, you've kind of stepped out of where you know you can be and should be with God and your devotion and your, your, just your faith life with him. If you're ready to come back, I want to tell you that God's ready to receive you back. Or maybe you've never made a step like that and you're ready to say fresh for the very first time, I'm, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to give it to him. I've tried it my own way and I'm done. I'm, I'm done doing it my way. I'm, I'm giving it to him. If I described you at all, would you just lift your hand up? I want to know who I'm praying for. Come on, lift it up. Amen, I see, I see you. I see you. Amen. Come on, this is your moment. I see you. Amen. Amen, I see you. Hallelujah. That's good. Awesome, awesome. Church, let's pray this together. Let's pray as a family this morning. Just say it with me. Say, Father God, I give you my life. I give you my heart. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die on a cross for my sin. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and show me the path that I should take. Amen.